here we're going to look at the presets tab. Uh, to, to find the preset that you want to work with, um, you can scroll up or scroll down or just type in the number, in this case 20. And that's how you get to a preset. If we uh, highlight a name, this is my patch. And I'll just save it so it's there. Um, so if I scroll up and scroll back down, you'll see that my changes are automatically saved as I hit the save command. So that's the name. I'm going to do a separate video describing how you program MIDI commands because uh, there's a lot to it. But essentially, each preset will allow uh, you to program up to uh, 10 commands with the ability to, um, using special commands, a link uh, to IA states, which you have 64 of. Um, so you have quite quite a bit of flexibility, but I'll save the programming uh, for later. But here in a preset, you have up to 10 MIDI messages that you can program. Below, if you want to override the global settings for an expression pedal, uh, and there are four of them in the liquid foot, then uh, so for expression pedal number one, you would override it, provide a, a MIDI command, uh, let's say a continuous uh, controller. Pick the MIDI channel that you want to use, tell it the CC number, and here you can set a minimum and maximum uh, if you don't, uh, the global setting is always 0, zero to um, uh, 127, but uh, in liquid foot you can set the minimum and maximum values uh, when you're doing overrides. And so I would do that again for pedal 2, 3, and 4 um, if that was a requirement for this preset. IA reprocessing, very straightforward. If you have a check mark, that means it's going to reprocess IA switches. What does that mean? If we come over to the initial states of the IA switches for this patch, let me just add a few more. Um, so if I reprocess this preset, which basically means when I step on the preset, um, or trigger the preset, it's going to trigger all of the 10 commands or as many as you have in here. And then it's going to look at the IA switches and it's going to take every switch that's in an on state or a green as represented by green here and it's going to send the on commands or resend the on commands for the, each of those IA switches, so S1, S7, 16, 26, and so on. And it's going to find all of the off state switches or as represented in red s2 11 35 and it's going to send all the off messages and then for all the ia switches that are uh, gray which means they're uh, technically not involved with this particular preset or, or have no purpose uh, it'll do uh, absolutely nothing it won't send on or off messages so if i shut that off then when i trigger this preset uh, it will set the initial state of the IA switches, but it will not re-trigger or resend the on and off commands. It'll wait until you actually stomp on it while you're live. And in this case, it would have sent the off messages and um, so on. Uh, tempo will become important later. If you have a certain beat per minute um, for this particular preset, you can go ahead and program it there. Um, you'll find in a special command when I teach you about this in detail, you can um, trigger a uh, tap tempo via special command and also program it in beats per minute up here from 31 to 250. So there, we'll just set this patch for a tempo of 129 beats per minute. Okay, normal. Uh, so a preset can either be a normal preset, which means all of this programming operates and then it will immediately initialize the uh, the states of each of the IA switches based on how you program it over here. You have the ability to disable the initial state of the SIs or the changing of SIs when you trigger this preset by telling it to act like an IA switch. And what that essentially means is that when I trigger preset number 20, then all of my MIDI commands will be processed, all of my overrides will be processed, all of my information except for IA reprocessing will be triggered. However, none of the initial state functions over here will actually um, 
be processed. So whatever the last state of the IA switches were uh, will remain. Now why this is important, I'll give you one example out of many uses for it. Let's uh, say we were in song mode. And uh, let me see. So it's patch number 20. Okay. Um, let's say we're in a song and we program in a couple of our uh, uh, normal pat, uh, presets or patches in the first three. But let's say this preset happens to have a looper. Well, I can program in a play. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's, since this is acting like an IA switch, let's call this a global, a global preset. In fact, you might want to put it at the top of memory, but let's call that loop. Oops. Loop play. Okay. So now if I program over here uh, preset number 20, loop play, because it acts like an IA switch, if I had triggered P1 over here, let's say my intro sound, and uh, I'm going to start the looping function, that what I don't want to do is change all the IA states because it's really triggered for this preset. So now that this acts like an IA switch, and this might be loop play, this might be loop stop, this might be an undo or some other looping function. Again, you're totally up to you and your style. But um, uh, this will not, now that this acts like an IA switch, it will not affect the um, IA switches uh, themselves. And it'll leave them just how they should be for this preset or the sound that we're playing at the time. Yet when I uh, step on, uh, uh, in this case, the P4 button on the bottom row, uh, we can have this just trigger uh, CC commands to control the looping functions of a looper or an effects unit or what have you. So there are many other uh, uses for acting like an IA switch, but essentially that's a quick uh, primer on it. So that's how you program a preset.